machines. There were no line shafts on this wing except maybe one or two for something. There were line shafts on that one. And uh, like I said, every one of these windows were bricked up. So when we bought the place, it looked like a cave, moldy, wet, floors fell, it was pretty scary. We just took mm. the chainsaw and started ripping out the queen here. There was a mill across the road where we were going to build a overflow parking lot. It was built probably in the 30s or 40s, the black mill be made. It could, it's, it's like World War II construction. Okay, so I don't know. Okay, there wasn't even a fly rule. Okay. You know, so that's why I thought they were early. Anyway, it was 10,000 square foot building. The Ryan's set. It was condemned. The Ryan's were going to have to tear it down. I said, let, let us tear it down. We spent four months. We saved every board that's overhead. The stuff that's under the floor over here. So these floors are five inches thick. That's it. So we had just replaced the oak. We went through with the same groove, two and a half, and then three and a quarter inch below, the, above that. And uh, we got it back fairly level, but what we realized, the building never was built level anyway. And all you got to do is look across the windows on that wing there, and you can see the windows vary six to eight inches each. And I think it's a matter how drunk the brick mason was. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and so the, the way these old mills were built, you know, when you look at a new house, you got steel headers and that sort of thing, and no concrete lift. They weren't done here. They basically stuck this big heavy wood frame on the wall and ripped that to the side, ripped on the top, and then put the gas on it and put it on the top. So when we tore the new brick out, all the windows collapsed all the way around. So we had to go back and hide steel and embed it in the wall, hold it back up with temporary jacks go to each one and do that. Uh, we didn't want to see big steel windows in here. It wouldn't have been that way. It, it worked out great for us. So most of the work we did, honestly, is hidden. You won't see it. You won't see what's, what has been done in the walls and where we jack mm -hmm. things up. John, the only thing I see in these mm -hmm. is a big fire. Oh, no. Uh -huh. No fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. Believe me, I was scared to death the first three years. All right, mm. this room out here, uh, we looked at that picture. That's, well, it used to go all the way to the road, so that's why it said it burned in 2000, and that's old shop. That's going to be our catering kitchen. So that, the caterer will back up. They'll have one of the stations, the ice makers, all that. They'll go through a big door they have here, and that area there will be my dumb waiter that comes up from the floor and brings up the food and the ice. There's a set of steps that go around the corner to the basement. That's going to be for the wait staff and the caterers. Uh, there'll be sinks back there and that linens, a nap and things like that. The, main, the, the public will be on this hall. The stairway will be over there to go down for the main public. We try to put it right in the middle. Uh, we moved our restrooms up here. It's getting dark, so I have to walk through the kind of stairs. Handicap, of course, takes a much larger one. The door stalls will look like those original vintage doors that we saved off the houses. We'll cut them down and have the old time install doors. This will be our janitor's closet where we have mop sinks, hot water heaters, mop rooms right in the center. Somebody spills stuff with you go. Men's room here, two urinals and toilet. And then storage is here. We have to have quick change for tables, chairs, just like a church. And uh, it's a mess, but bear with it. And when you get in here, you can kind of see what you can't see in the rest of the building. So you can kind of see all the work that's been done that we try to hide. But most people wouldn't realize that all this is in here. And if you just look around the corners, you'll see my two smallest heating and cooling units. <laughs> so you can kind of see what, what's going on. So once they get through with the heating and cooling, we can rack this up in here. We'll have chairs, tables ready to go, and racks. We'll roll them right out the door and change out. And this is what the floor looked like originally. So you see all the travelers in the floor. All right. This is kind of soft too. Yes, it is. And that's exactly what the rest of the floor was like, but that's still five inches thick. And the reason it's soft is you are between two beams. You have an eight foot span. All textile mills built in the south had an eight foot span. Wow. They knew how far a wood beam would go. They knew a wood beam would go 27 foot by eight foot across. And so almost every meal you go to, you'll find exactly the inch measurement, mm. the eight foot on center, actually. 
And so you see all these travelers, that whole floor had millions of them. There was so many when I run the sand rover, sparks would fly, I was afraid it'd catch my dust catcher on. I hired a nice young uh, college girl from uh, Belarus, and she sat here for six weeks with a pick and picked all the travelers out of that entire wing up there. Sure. I've got five gallon bucket, and I don't know how many millions that is, but that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> It says she did that for us so we can sand floors. But mm. this is kind of pretty much what it looked like up on the, that whole way. Mm. How uh, long are they? The travelers are just small. They're uh, usually about the size of a pencil eraser. And see, the buggies would run over and push them down in the ground. Mm. And each traveler determines the size of the yarn and the twist of the yarn. So they were sacrificial parts. They fell out constantly. Wow. Like and you can just pick them out. All right. Did you really? You couldn't see anything. Mm. Well, you missed it on the face when we did fuel. Yeah, I had to do a face too. That's part of my requirement for closing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to phase one, and they made me do another phase one because it had been. Uh, just a couple of years too far out. Okay, uh, the only thing that's not here, these are the original bathrooms. You can see how small they were. Now I got 24 inch doors by six. I hit my head when I oh, go in. Uh, you had, that was Good men's. Lance. This was the ladies. You had a. That uh, is old. That's it. That's the only one for the whole meal, for this whole full. And that was great, because otherwise all the other meals had outhouses. So there's articles and papers about modern plumbing. Mm. Well, they had a great big tank on top, and they pumped really the water off the water wheel. They pumped water up the whole tank. Yeah, right. Still pipe, still pipe, still out there. That right that's, the that's like that's you can uh, sit out one in the lake and back off the road. That's my vision. What are you doing? What are you doing? This is a right. This is on the No, it's like a Vince venue for like weddings oh, and okay. parties. All right, so this becomes our cooler. So we've got a, across the road, we've got a six foot by six foot by eight foot cooler. This is where my beer kicks say, I'm sorry to say that, but we're all different, so we can say that. So uh, out here where Mike is standing will be a bar that starts at that pole and then this receptacle. Our lines go under the floor back up into taps into our bar from the cooler in the back. So once you set them, you hook up two or three and just go right to it. So all that's just for alcohol storage, honestly. That's all it's for. Mm. But, um, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is the view. Uh, yeah, we're just looking at yeah, go ahead and look. Uh, uh, the crane is used out there fishing. You're going to see some gut goslings out there. Uh, you know, this time of night is my favorite time. This is when you see a lot of wild life. You can see where I sit normally during the day. Right here. I fished in that river right mm. out there just right above it. I hope you didn't eat them. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. But I know people did. But before I fished, the shore line, the yeah. heel, run in the river right there. Yeah. And you yeah. can catch fish, catch fish in there. But I, I bet you could. Good, gracious. Like, now we're going to see the basement too? Pole, catch uh, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of them, but I wouldn't eat them. Yeah. I, well, uh, we talked about the big flood that was about three weeks ago. I was in California working, and people were sending me texts, and the dam was completely covered. You couldn't see it. The road was closed right over here. This was completely full up to the top of the sluice way, mm. and, uh, which was a, a, a divine gift. Because what happened was, I told you we had to raise the floor in this basement, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, i got to put... You know, 12 to 13 inches of sand in this entire space. And if you look at that, that's a lot of sand. Mm. So it all washed right there. Mm -hmm. So you can see my tractor. I saw the tractor. So I just print. came out yesterday, <laughs> and for three days, all I did was scoop a, scoop of sand, take it up here and dump it, and another tractor came and took it to the basement. So we have. Uh, you already picked in the basement. Yeah, right. We got 70% of our basement filled off of the divine flood. So it worked out good. Otherwise, we're going to be buying a whole lot of sand from somebody, and we got free sand. So, it's <laughs> so that sand came from under there? Yeah, what happens when the river floods? That, that used to be the old floodgate there. That was yeah. put in about 1940. <coughs> the sand actually goes over the dam and swirls back 
this direction. No, right here. That's your waterway. Oh, see, if you okay. look and, and see, it goes back to the river, back that direction. Oh, just follow the sand. So this wind is where the water wheel would have been, which I said water wheel, I mean turbine. And you see a great big iron hook out there. That's how they were lowered and raised because they had to change it with the river elevation. That was dammed off in 1978 over there uh, just to keep the water from running all the way around the building. There wasn't a point anymore. They had power in 57. And um, so you would normally see this. If you look at that, that dam's actually diverted. Uh, diverted. It's not a dam. So it was designed to pull all the water from the river right by here. So it had a tremendous amount of power. And I hear all these stories from these older folks that worked here. They talk about what their dad said. And they said, you know, when the water was high, you worked yourself to death. When the water was low, you had it made. It was really kind of interesting. And all the machinery here, of course, is off the same line shafts. So they had to time the machinery like a quarter second to a half second different. If you didn't, you set up a harmonic in here, and the whole building would shake apart. So you had to offset every machine in the whole building when the, you know, when the line shaft turned. So what we're going to do, we're going to hang a section of line shaft just about 20 feet because young folks have no idea what a line shaft is. We're just going to put on a small DC motor so it barely turns and they can kind of get an idea in their head what used to power all the machinery. Maybe drive a fan off of it or something like that. And, um, yeah, there are some places that have Right. Line chef was paying on them for cooling and stuff. John, what got you in? Oh, yeah. Well, I just live about four miles away. You know, I live in Strauss. And we were looking for a place to have a venue. Uh, about 15 years ago, uh, what, I had a real a close friend in, in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, his wife passed suddenly. And a few years later, he was married. And we flew out to the wedding. And it was a church wedding, but then we went to the reception. We just kept driving. In Texas, they tell you it's a little ways down the road. I think it's two hours, yeah. <laughs> so we drove and drove and drove and drove. And we went out in the middle of this prairie, and it was a huge barn, probably built in the late 1800s, about the size of probably this wing, but two stories. And the guy had renovated it for just receptions and Christmas parties and things like that. And I was really impressed with it. And it was right behind his house. All he had to do was walk out the back door to open up to his thing. So I started talking to my friend about, well, how did you know about this place? He said, everybody around here knows about it. He said, he said, we had to pick our wedding date on the only weekend it was available. And I said, really? And so we started turning the wheels. And I've traveled my whole life. I have since in my early 20s. My wife's an engineer for wire. She travels often too. So our goal was by the time we get into our 50s, that all we've got to do is drive three miles down the road and go to a business. We don't get on planes anymore. We don't have to wake up in some strange bed. So that was, that was kind of the goal. Now, yes, this place came available. And no, we didn't know it was that bad. And no, I didn't know it was going to take me over five years to do it. But it did. So it's five years, five months, 28 days. Exactly how long I've been here. I can tell you. Another year or two? No, no. We actually, believe it or not, this upper floor, and the parking lots and everything will be done in less than eight weeks. Hmm. The basement won't be done. That's phase two. And so the basement's already looks like brick and it looks like timber. And we're putting it's a bunch of sand in the bottom right now. That's exactly what it is. So what we'll do is we'll move out all the tools, everything, put it down below. We could be having events up here on most of ours are going to be on a weekend. So like Monday through Thursday, we could be working down below and nobody even knows that what's going on down below. You're painting, you're making things, you can't even hear. If I'm down there, you can't even hear me running a tractor in there because the floors are so big. So that's what we're going to do. And that'll take us an additional year. We'll have another event space below be used more for like proms, 50th anniversaries, or try to 75 to 125 mm -hmm. market. Now the majority of people that are booking us for weddings are in the 200 to 300 range. And there's not a lot of places you can go to in the area and have everybody indoors. I wish we had air conditioning, but it's kind of a bit like today. And you don't worry about the weather. It just does not matter. Now, we have seating capacity of 500 people on the floor. We actually have more, but we had to put our own waste treatment center in because there's no sewer. And we can't dump it in the river like they did. <laughs> so we had to put 16,000 gallons of tanks out here to pump up the mountain over there. And we have a two-acre field that processes. It's a 
drip processes and it completely filters and it circulates around you can drink the water once it comes out to that period. And mm -hmm. you wouldn't even know it. If you went up there, all you see is clover and a grass field and one little control panel about this big, and that's it. And that took a year and a half to get that engineered, and you should understand that. I, I took soil samples out here where the tanks were. That's right. Came up clean. I'm, I'm I'll tell you what happened. Right. Where the tanks were, it was fine. Hubert Mooney, who was a maintenance man, some of you might know. I know you. Well, somebody ran a copper line from a tank into a heater in the basement, and they kinked it. So what they did is they got a big roll of black tape and taped up something about the size of a baseball ball. And that dripped for 20 years. And it was in a ditch, that's why you didn't find it, in a two foot stretch that went out 25 feet. Mm. So it just followed the ditch oh. and went through. And the one, you know, when I had to have all kinds of phase one, phase two, that's what he bored the ground. I had I only had to have three holes bored on this whole property to test for contaminants. Yes, no, he hit the damn copper line. <laughs> tape to it, I swear. <laughs> so, out of all the places, he hit it. Boy, that threw up big places. So, here comes EPA, we can't close on long, we got all kinds of stuff on. Hey, Paul, how are you? That's that type of bread. I'm just going to get that. I have it. It's, you see the microwave in there? It's on a clipboard. Okay. Thank you. And, uh, anyway, that's what happened. And, uh, we got it cleaned up. It was a mess, but that just dead stopped everything. Probably cost us about two or three months to get that corrected. So we had all these delays from, you know, you don't have a sewer system a year and a half for that. Now, the county's not going to let you do anything until you got a place to put your poop. I don't care where you go, I don't care what you do. So it took us a year and a half to do that. Then we hit ground contamination, yada, 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 yada. And so really, you couldn't have done it any faster. Final plans reached my hand about seven months ago. And until that point, there were no permits or no So now we we're trying to make up for it at the end. Mm. But while they were doing that, we were in here sanding beams, we were sandblasting, we were finishing wood. We couldn't build walls, we couldn't inspect it, obviously, but we did everything we could do to get it ready to put the windows in. And uh, just like the window frames, when you look at them, I told you we tore that building down across the road. Well, it had beams uh, very similar to this uh, in it, not quite as big. We took all those to the sawmill because these window frames are two and a half inches thick by 13 inches wide. And you can't buy that type one or anywhere. So the each frame weighs 300 pounds each. So we set each frame back in hole, shot epoxy in the walls, you know, not cool seal, but uh, great stuff all the way around them and reproduced all the moldings that were on it based off of one wind I had. So it, that was no fun. That we had all the frames in and we had it boarded up. It drove by and it seemed like it boarded up for two years. That's probably couldn't set the windows. Can't set the windows out of the pitch. So uh, finally, the hard part's done. It's the rest of it. And again, about the salvage thing, uh, I don't know, have you guys seen the new trail edition they did? Uh, the walking trail downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there was a warehouse back there. It was a cotton warehouse. Uh, I don't know if Lineberger's on it or who exactly, but somebody called us up and said, we're getting ready to demolish this building and take it to landfill. We want to give you a div on it. We went over there, and all this wood you see behind you, this lanes coating, all the way around, all my oil frames and all that, came from that wood. I paint that warehouse. So we took a crew of four of us. We had one week, one week only to strip off every board, every piece of timber wow. we could get. We store our timber across the road. I wound up with something like uh, 1,700 pieces of vintage lumber, 500 pieces of old corrugated tins, I mean, just all this stuff. And so we used that over and over again. And uh, mm. the flooring was two and a half inches, tongue grooves as well that big so we've got stacks of that's what we're making all our stairways out of we drip it down and make molding and do all kinds of things like that. All right, what kind of questions we got? Side the word of my airplane. Did I cover it okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too much? <laughs>